on one of our walks, we came to a door that was between these plants, and it was closed off, and the kids just started to open it and let us up through the yard. Um, there was like a little hill that we went up, and on either side, or on either side, we could see a lot of like plants and vegetation, which is kind of unusual, I guess. I always pictured Haiti to be very dry and arid and eroded, but there was a lot of plants there. And um, we came up to this house that was at the top of a hill. It was just a little tiny house, and there was a family living there. It was an older couple and their kids and grandkids. And as soon as we got there, this older woman, she ran into her house and grabbed two chairs for us to sit down in and to rest. And we gave them dum-dums and some snacks and took pictures. We got up to leave. The woman showed us this melon that she had grown in her garden. We were like, oh, it's a beautiful melon. Um, and we tried to explain to her that we didn't have any money to give her, and we wished that we could have because we would love to buy this melon from her. And she kind of, I, it was a little hard because we don't speak the language, she doesn't speak our language, but eventually we understood that she didn't want us to buy it from her, she wanted to give it to us as a gift. And um, she actually, not only did she give us one melon, but she gave me, Lee, and Gail each a melon. Um, so that just, that always really stuck with me. Um, her act of kindness and generosity was just amazing. She didn't know us at all. We were just three strangers who came to her house, and she gave us the best of what she had. She gave us the chairs, the only chairs that she had to sit in, and these three beautiful melons to take back and enjoy. While the dust from the unpaved road settles into my shoes and the songs and dances of my Haitian friends live on in my heart, I will tell you the story of my first trip to Haiti. As we traveled through our small village and beyond its borders, I kept noticing something over and over again. The human touch is incredibly strong here. You see it in the schoolyard with children who are not related to one another. You see it in the teenage boys who walk arm in arm while they stroll down the road. When they sit down to join you in conversation or to look at photos, they sit right next to you. It is very comforting. One particular instance really struck me when it happened and I treasure this memory. While visiting one of the homes, about tw a 20 minute walk from the school, we stopped to visit and take some photographs. As I readied my camera to get another beautiful shot of our new friends, one young man, about 20 years old, came right over and ever so gently wiped the perspiration from his friend's forehead, face, and cheeks with his bare hand. A simple, compassionate gesture that is in my mind and that I will remember for a long, long time to come. In our society, we often are so wrapped up in our busy day-to-day -day lives that we forget the incredible importance of physical human contact with one another. Life in rural Haiti is not filled with long, lazy summer days. Their day-to-day -day existence is filled with very labor-intensive chores, such as farming, walking to the well to refill their five-gallon buckets, which they often balance on their heads while returning home over rocks, up hills, perfectly balanced. Preparing and cooking their food takes many hours as there is no electricity in any of the small cinder block homes. Fires are built in the 95 degree heat to prepare their meal. My trip to Haiti has taught me never to take anything for granted. We are so blessed to be living in this country where we have so many opportunities for success and we have so much available to us. Even going to the grocery store um, it just reminds me how lucky we are to be able to drive down the street five minutes from our house and to pick from 20 different cereal boxes. We don't have to walk for miles and miles to get pounds of rice to carry back on our heads. <laughs> so I'm so thankful for the life that God has given me and for the opportunity that I had to go to um, St. Laurent and Bassin and to meet all of these wonderful people. My perspective on life has totally been changed and I I can't wait to see my new friends again. <laughs> the opportunity to visit the amazing country and people of Haiti came about rather unexpectedly for me. I am most grateful to have had the chance 
to, a, to travel there and can hardly imagine that my next visit will not happen for a whole year. I hope I can wait that long. The stories are endless. Some are sad, some are joyful. Each of them has a lesson for us to learn and all of them are full of God's love and his divine providence. Although desperately poor in material things, the people in the villages have a deep and profound faith. I think perhaps when your day-to-day -day existence is so challenging, it becomes ever more clear that you must rely on God in all things. I repeat what I always say upon my return. We have much to learn from our sisters and brothers in Christ, and I'm counting the days until I return. Je ne